water is the essence of all things. And we're constantly working at being able to reconnect to our first foods, to the water, to everything that's related to our tamanwa. And our tamanwa is the story of the water and the first foods. Wapato is a great story of a first food. As Lewis and Clark came through this way, they, they logged that Native women were gathering Wapato um, from the sediment, from the mud. It's another healthy source of carbohydrate. The first thing that disrupted Wapato was taking Native people off their, their lands and corralling them. Our first foods uh, require tending. When you take indigenous people off the land, they've been doing a sophisticated, low impact tending of the land in a seasonal, respectful way. Culturally, Wapto was a main staple of many tribes in the area. Wapato is very water-centered and uh, likes to grow in the mud and floodplains. A lot of colonizing practices across the country um, disrupt water flow. There's a great story with the Yakama Nation on the Wapato coming back on their land once European agricultural practices were stopped. And so they're like, okay, well, let's repair this wetland and bring it back to a wetland and re-establish re it. So they reestablished the area, and a year later, what came up was Wapto. We had to go search for it, and someone said, okay, we located over by Richland Kennewick, and there's this spot. Go over to this area. So we grabbed our buckets and shovels. We're like, well, if we can find it, maybe we can dig it up and see, you know, what it's like, because none of us had ever gathered it. Sure enough, we found it. We got down there in the mud, we started digging it. The water started moving, and you started seeing all these thousands of seeds passing by us. So when you're looking at the interaction when we're getting back to foods, is that we help with their production. The reemergence of Wapato and other plants that are coming up reminds me that we're not doing this work alone. We never were. They are our elders. The reconnection of us going to fish, going to find Wapato, going to find foods, especially on the river, is a reconnection not only to the water, but to culturally significant places that relate to the connection to water, to people, to culture, to the basis of life of where we live. When you just relax and enjoy the environment, there's a calming effect that can raise an awareness and understanding of life's flow. There's a poetry to it. I feel like it's important for people to connect with rivers, water, and just a general habitat, um, because when you feel like you've connected with it in some way, you might be more likely to support those higher level decisions that would lead to the protection of natural resources. Collectively, there needs to be a much larger shift so that we're all invested in it. Water doesn't recognize boundaries. It's flowing, inviting folks to participate. This is their home too now, and they will have to be willing to live here in a good way.